Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And welcome. I'm here with Brandon. Brandon is a member of our praise team at Good Shepherd. And so he's been kind enough to join us this morning. He also works at Penn State as an academic advisor. And so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what it's like being an academic advisor while this pandemic is going on. What's that, what's that like? Yeah, it's definitely been a transition, but um, we are open for business. We are hosting a lot of our appointments, or all of our appointments are on Zoom. Um, and we also have a lot of email correspondence with students. And, you know, I've been really encouraged to see how positively students have handled this situation and, right. and how they've really handled it with maturity. So. Um, I'm thankful for the work I get to do and, and the great colleagues I get to work with every day. Oh, that's, gr that's great. I, I'm sure you get a little bit of uh, a screen burnout after a while. You can only do so much Zoom before you get Zoomed to yourself. You just like zombie Zoomed. <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I always try to get some fresh air, yeah. um, you know, get up, walk around, get exercise. That definitely helps. It's important yeah. to stay active. It is. It's important to get outside and enjoy uh, the creation. Uh, it's a little bit chilly this morning. That's why <laughs> we have our jackets on there. Well, we're going to be in Romans. We're going to be in Romans chapter four, and I just want to remind everybody that uh, if you we load up all the studies to GoodShepherdSC.org. You can also find us on um, YouTube. If you look for Good Shepherd Lutheran State College, you're going to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also, if you have any prayer requests, Pastor B. Spang at Comcast.net. Pastor B. Spang at Comcast.net. All right. So, we're going to be in Romans chapter 4. This is a very... Well, so, the last... Uh, yesterday, we went through Romans 3, which was the culmination. Uh, two things in Romans 3. There is religious people who tried, were going to try to earn their salvation through obedience to God. And finally, then, Paul pivots in Romans three and he says no one will be justified before God through observation through observing the law because we don't observe the law but through the law we become conscious of sin so it acts like a mirror to us and then he says uh, in Romans 3 23 all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely on account of what Christ has done that is the good news that's the gospel and so today we're going to look at he's delving into that more and he's going to use the example of Abraham so Brandon's going to start us off in Romans chapter 4, starting at verse 1. All right. Uh, what then shall we say that Abraham our forefather discovered in this matter? If in fact Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who does not work, but trusts in God, who justifies the wicked, his, his faith is credited as righteousness. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him. Is this blessedness only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? We have been saying that Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Under what circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised or before? It was not after, but before. And he received the sign of circumcision, the seal of the righteousness that he had faith, that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So then, he is the father of all who believe, but have not been circumcised in order that righteousness might be credited to him. And he is also the father of the circumcised, who not only are circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. It was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by law are heirs, faith has no value, and the promise is worthless, because law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. And then continuing in verse 16, Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace, and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring, 
not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words it was credited, credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will give, will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he has delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we're thankful for this morning, uh, the beauty of your creation, the birds chirping around us, the uh, green grass, life that is springing forth. We're thankful for this time in the Word, and we pray, Lord God, that your Spirit would move in our hearts and minds uh, and draw us closer to Jesus. We pray this in his mighty name. Amen. <clears throat> so, Paul now is using uh, an example of Abraham's life, and uh, Abraham... Uh, a very interesting uh, life he had. So uh, he was named Abram, and then renamed Abraham. And he was told by God to journey from Ur of the Chaldeans, which is in modern day Iraq, I believe, um, and head over towards what would be modern day Israel. Uh, and he had many difficulties along the journey uh, that he had. And God promised that. Uh, a great nation would arise from him. Uh, and that promise was made when he was in his 70s. <laughs> so, and you're like, uh, okay. And nothing was happening for year after year. And Abraham finally thought, well, maybe it's not really happening the way we thought it was going to happen. Because his wife is certainly beyond childbearing years. But they did ultimately believe God and his promise and God did um, fulfill that promise as uh, Abraham uh, and Sarah his wife gave birth eventually to Isaac but that was a long time it was 20 years it was like 20 years from the time of the promise and you're old to the time of the birth of Isaac I mean to to hold on to faith for that long when it seems like no, this isn't happening. That had to be very, very difficult. There's controversy in this chapter, though. And the controversy re revolves around the way James, in the book of James, addresses the same issue. In James chapter 2, verse 20, You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And so the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Hmm. <laughs> so Paul is saying, okay, it, uh, he it, he uses the same exact verse. It says it's credit, it credit to him as righteousness. He believed God is credit to him as righteousness. That uh, it is faith alone that saves. Now, James seems to be saying, oh, your faith is made complete by what you, what you do. Well, here's, here's the deal. Would, you know, would we say that, uh, here's kind of a trick question. Uh, are works necessary okay you would say, you would say yes yeah. but it, 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 the trick question would be they're not necessary as part of our like salvation is by grace alone through faith alone in Christ 
but they're a necessary, in other words, a inevitable outflow of your faith. If you say you have faith and there's no evidence, there's no evidence of that, then you probably didn't have faith. So that's what James is saying is basically his faith and his actions are working together. He has faith and inevitably the spirit is working in his life to produce this action. So it is in us as, as believers that faith in Jesus Christ doesn't leave us just like, oh, well, okay, I'm just sitting around here waiting to be beamed up to heaven someday and, uh, you know, nothing else with my life. So, yes, so faith is an inevitable outflow of our of our trust in God, of our faith in Jesus Christ. So that's, a, that's an important point to remember. So there's no conflict between James and Paul. They're really saying the same thing from a different different angle from a different way in there all right so uh, going on here uh, it really says that we become that Abraham who's the father of faith uh, becomes uh, we become children of Abraham as well through faith it's almost like we're adopted into uh, into being Israelites in a, in a sense and he'll go into that further as we go through the book of Romans that we're like grafted into Israel uh, and so we become children of Abraham and I remember uh, uh, when Jesus would have some conf confrontations with 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 them and say hey when they'd say hey we're children of Abraham and uh, you know like when he's going into Jerusalem and people are cheering and so forth and the Pharisees are like tell them to keep quiet and uh, even if you would have them be quiet the stones would cry out you know God can raise up children his followers from anywhere and so he's he's uh, grafted into we've been grafted into the body of Christ we who are Gentiles have been grafted in and those who have faith in Jesus who are of Jewish descent are Abraham's children as well so it is a, it is an issue of by faith it's not an issue of like external circumcision or anything else because Abraham he says was counted as righteous before circumcision mm -hmm. the circumcision comes afterwards so those are kind of some of the points that kind of jumped out at me on this um, what are some things that uh, you know look you know, as you were looking through here that maybe you had a question on or jumped out at you well, I think if there is ever a person who had a right to not have faith, I think it would be Abraham be yeah. based on his life circumstances. Yeah. And that right there is really, that's not Abraham having the faith. That's the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. at that, at, for that. Um, and so I'm just really amazed at his faith that he had through the Holy Spirit. Um, and also just going back, I love verse um, 16 where it says, um, he is the father of us all. Yeah. Um, and how you know the gospel it transcends ethnicity race yeah. um, it's through faith in Jesus Christ and that's the, the universal message that the gospel really brings and I think Paul's trying to say it doesn't matter what matters is do you have faith through Christ and that comes through the Holy Spirit yeah yeah so we are become Abraham's offspring uh, you're right. I mean, the, the the faith that he did have is, is incredible because it says in verse, what is it, 19 as well, without weakening in his face, he, in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. In other words, he's so old, he's got one foot in the grave, and <laughs> since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was already dead. Yikes! I mean, to have to have faith in there. So, yeah, um, and I think that's a good point that you bring up that. Um, we are it's not a matter of ethnicity um, race or anything else that Stacy and I have addressed this a couple times it's very saddening to me that during this pandemic there are acts of prejudice uh, against Asian Americans uh, or against Asians in general uh, and that simply we can't let that happen we just we're as a church we're going to speak up and we're going to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in christ uh I, I mean i have i have issues with the government that is out there with government uh you know the chinese government and maybe what they did but that doesn't mean anything about asians in general uh we love we love people all people of all all backgrounds and 
We want to know that this is a place that you can come to uh, if you're struggling with anything. If, if We want to be here at your side uh, to walk with you through these things. So uh, that's a very important uh, and, and, and it's important work for you at the university because we get people from all over the world, right, that come here. And I think that's what makes it great here. We're in the middle of nowhere. We can <laughs> smell cow manure and meet people from all over the world. Where else do you get to do that? No place else. <laughs> no place else. We, we got it all, right? We do. <laughs> there, do you have anything else in there? Uh, no, I think that's that's everything. All right. Well, let's have let's have a word of prayer. Let's let's uh, lift up those who you know may be facing prejudice at this time. Father, we ask you, Lord God, who would come in your presence, thankful for the shed blood of Jesus for us, that He's adopted us into His kingdom. Uh, we're thankful for people that have gone before us, like people of faith, like Abraham, but also people that you have placed in our lives. Uh, that brought us uh, to church, that introduced us to Jesus. Uh, we can think of family members, of friends, of others that have been influential in our life, and we're so thankful for them. And we do want to lift before your throne of grace those who may be facing uh, prejudice and, and hurt right now uh, during this pandemic just because of their ethnicity. We ask, Lord God, that that would cease, that we would come together as, your, as, as a people, redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus and realize that all of us have sinned and fallen short of your glory and are in need of your grace and forgiveness. So Lord God, work through your church, work through your people, um, that we would uh, be a people that live out our faith and the reality that your love is for all people, your grace is for all people, no matter what their background, no matter what their ethnicity. We pray, Lord God, that our lives will reflect that. We pray that all in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day, everybody. Have a great day.